I introduce, and I love to introduce, Svetlana Zalichuk from the Vahov Narada, MP, and also representing the civil society of Ukraine. Uh, Svetlana, there's many people in Germany who look at the development in Ukraine and say, forget about it, it's a lost case. What do you answer? First of all, I think that it is in the interest of European Union and those members of NATO to make sure that Ukraine is a secure and prosperous country. Why? Because uh, one, when now everyone is talking about that Russia is the biggest threat to the democracy and to the security in the European Union, successful Ukraine is one of the preconditions of how to reform the whole region. Ukraine is the model and if we succeed, then all those other countries, including Georgia, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, you know, Azerbaijan, and finally Russia, ultimately Russia, will be also reformed. We're going to be know-how. But of course, uh, Ukraine is in the transition. We made a lot in the last three years, more than in the previous 25 years. May I, may I inter interrupt you and come back? Do you see this, that it is in our European interest that you succeed? There can be a different version, which says, if we had asked Russia before we offered you the EU association treaty, uh, if we had not provoked Russia so much, trying to tear you over to the Western side, we wouldn't have that trouble within Europe. But I'd like to remind you that in the beginning of the 90s, Boris Yeltsin, the Russian president, considered that one day Russia may enter, for example, NATO. And it was a public discussion at that point in the society. So it's not the problem that NATO is a threat somehow to the Russian state or Russian country, but it's definitely a threat, together with the European Union, to a current regime. And it is very important to understand. I think that most of uh, progressive Russian business, they are cooperating here together with European partners. They are ready, they are happy to, to, to go into the open market. That's how the country is growing. But I think that the main uh, problem here is that Putin wants to keep the power as it is not only in Russia in authoritarian way, but also in the whole region. Russia wants to have its colonies uh, Georgia, Ukraine, Armenia, Belarus. We've seen it that Russia started many of the conflicts uh, in the whole region. But on the other hand, what we learn is that there is demonstrations uh, in Kiev now. Uh, we learn a lot that you have strong right-wing movements, uh, nationalists, uh, people who, who uh, stick to uh, the, their hero Bandera. Isn't there a threat uh, that uh, Ukraine might become a right-wing nationalist country? There is less right-wing representatives in Ukrainian parliament than in Germany, than in Austria, than in Netherlands, than in Spain and many other European countries. We have less than 2% of those MPs in the parliament and it was open, fair elections. People just didn't support them. Of course, there are those uh, far-right leaders that are there and they are public, they are active, but I suppose it's a, a challenge that we face in many other countries in the world, including here. Now, coming to the protests, because you mentioned it as one of the characteristics of our transition, right? I think peaceful assemblies are never really a threat to a democracy. Moreover, it's one of the forms of the democracy. And I remember when you had elections here just uh, a couple of months here, right? You also had uh, an, a peaceful gathering near the Brandenburg Gate right on the night. Why? Because people didn't support what's going on. Mm -hmm. Same with Ukraine. Uh, people use their democratic forms to show to the power that maybe they do not deliver enough. Maybe what they promise uh, are not happening. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the government Poroshenko has delivered? Or would you say, well, really actually it's not moving like we have expected when we saw Maidan and the hopes we were uh, having with this uh, uprise of the population? I want to be fair here. First, visa regime, done. 
we adopted 144 different policies in order to reform our system, in order to get this visa-free uh, regime with the European Union. Energy system, we completely refused from Russian gas, which was always the leverage of the Russian presidents to uh, keep, the, keep Ukraine in the sphere of legitimate interest uh, of Russia. Now, also, public service reformed. We built anti-corruption bureau. We introduced electronic declaration for all MPs, ministers, public servants. One million people shows what they drive, where do they live, what kind of bank accounts they have. But at the same time, I want to say this is not enough. Uh, this is not the country we wanted to see in three years after Euromaidan. I wanted to say that uh, the speed of the reforms is not quick enough and the quality of reforms is not enough. And the main problem is still corruption and vested interest. There are people around the president, around the main power, that are, they want to keep the status quo. And this is, I think, the main fight now in Ukraine. So, um, when you say it's not fast enough, uh, my question would be, there is going to be a new German government after the elections. What do you expect from us? First of all, uh, I would expect active role and continuation of your role in the uh, solution of our uh, conflict in the eastern part. Which we means? Need to, we need to stop the war with Russia. It means to keep sanctions. It means to make the price for Russia uh, occup keep on occupying territories in Crimea, in Donbass, keep the, keeping the uh, political prisoners very high. I also expect your role in the deoccupation of Crimea. Crimean Tatars is uh, in a big danger as a, as a nation and I think that there is very little debate in the world about it. Unlike maybe Donbass, because Donbass has at least Minsk agreement, but Crimea, everyone, you know, to a certain extent we may say that since Russia occupied it and uh, installed their government there, uh, asserted it in a way that the world thinks, okay, this is, uh, this is so aggressive that we, we would rather give up, this is not right. Uh, I would also uh, remind that uh, continuation of the North stream too would be a big danger, not just for Ukraine, for the whole region, but for Germany as well. I think it's, uh, I can't find the logic of why you as Europeans are pumping up Gazprom with money, that using those resources further on to undermine the security system in the, uh, in the region, that using those money to participate in American elections, French elections, German elections, uh, you know, this is, I think, um, not wise strategic decision because in the end uh, it will mean that it will rearrange the whole security system, uh, of energy security system in the region and will harm, I think, in a longer term perspective, uh, the, the security system in general. So, what I learn is that you think that we have a few things to get straightened out also. Thank you, Svetlana. Thank you so much.